welcome back to my channel. Today I'm here with a tag video. I haven't done a tag in a long time and I needed something to fill this Sunday's uh, video slot. So I figured that I'd do the indie tag that's been going around recently. There's been a couple people do it so I figured I would do it as well. So we're just gonna get on into the questions. So question number one is what was the very first indie polish that you purchased? Um, so I started collecting polish late 2000 and 13, early 2014 was when I really started collecting polish. And I think the very first indie that I bought would have been an A England, I'm pretty sure. I know A England's kind of on the more boutique side of things now, but I think back then they were still considered an indie brand. Um, and when I ordered those A Englands, I ordered three from Nail Polish Canada. One of them was Percival, the other one was Order of the Garter. And I can't remember what the third one was. I have a lot of Anglers now and I'm not sure what that third England was, but those were the first indies, indies that I purchased. Um, more on the log of, of true indies, because like I said, they're more of a, a boutique brand than a, than a um, indie brand, because I believe they're actually made in a factory. I don't believe they're hand mixed. Um, KB Shimmer would have been the first true indie that I purchased and I think it was Up and Cunning which is still one of my favorite KB Shimmers if not my favorite KB Shimmer. At one point it was definitely my favorite KB Shimmer. I don't know if it still falls into that. I'd have to do my top KB Shimmers. Up and Cunning was my favorite KB Shimmer and I believe it was my first KB Shimmer as well. Question number two, what's an indie polish lemming that you want but have never been able to get your hands on? Um, Fair Maiden Lady Liberty. It came out from Polish. It was a Polish Con. It was either a VIP bag or it was an exclusive from Polish Con New York in 2017, I want to say. Maybe even 16. But it's um it's 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 called Lady Liberty, so it's kind of like um like a you know like how copper goes once it's been oxidized it's like that greeny color and it's got copper flecks in it it's very pretty i've always wanted to get my hands on it i've tried to get my hands on it multiple times but i've never been able to so that is my biggest indie lemming number three name an indie polish that you bought because of a youtuber i have lots of influencers here on uh, youtube i watch lots of youtube channels and i have a lots of um girls that have influenced polishes that I've, I've purchased. Um, Claire, Debbie, <laughs> Catherine. Uh, if you want to go back to when I first started watching YouTube way back before I even had my channel, it would have been uh, Lindsay Does Nails, um, Jess Face 90, Nail Polish Baby 90, um, Sonora, Miss Holly Berries, like all of those girls have influence polishes that I have purchased. I'm um, thinking off of a couple off the top of my head. Claire made me buy Light of Lyra from Tonic. Debbie made me buy Magnetic Midnight from, um, from also from Tonic. Catherine made me buy Cadillacer, um, it, Nothing Burns Like the Cold. So there's been a lot of influences in my indie journey along the way. Question number four, what is your favorite and least favorite type of indie polish? So it's got a list of like hollow, multi-flame, multi-chrome, flaky, etc. I have always loved hollow nail polish. It's still one of my favorite types of finish. I'm very into multi-chromes right now. I love multi-chrome polishes. Absolutely adore multi-chrome polishes. Um, and if they got hollow in there, it makes it even better. So. I guess right now, right now my favorite would be Hall of Multichromes. My least favorite, I have to say, is Magnetics. I'm not really into Magnetics. I have a couple. I think I have maybe four or five Magnetic polishes, I want to say, if not more. Um, but I have such a hard time getting that nice crisp line of, of the magnet, the magnetic particles on my nail. I just, I guess I just need to practice it. It's just frustrating. I think that's why I don't enjoy it because I can't get that crisp line. If I tried harder, maybe I'd be able to get it. But at, at, at this point, I'm not really feeling the magnetic hype. Question number five is name an indie polish that fits your personality to a T. I pulled this one out. This is 
Ambrosia by Tonic and this is a deep blue it's got this red green flash in here it just I don't know it's so pretty and it's blue and it you know it, if it's gonna be a polish that represents me it's definitely got to be blue because I love my blues and this has just got the hollow in it but if I were to create a polish that I thought represented me and my my personality I would make something like this I think it's I don't know it's just this is just me this is this is how I see myself is ambrosia by tonic Question number six, what indie polish company do you wish you owned every bottle slash collection from? I would definitely have to say Tonic. I have a lot of Tonics, um, but I don't have every one of them. And there's some older ones that I know were very limited edition that I won't be able to get my hands on that I would really like to. Um, so yeah, if I could own absolutely every single polish that Tonic has put out and will put out in the future, I would be happy camper. Question number seven, name an indie polish that physically made your jaw drop when you saw it. Recently from my Indie Expo haul, I got a Bee's Knees prototype and it was called Defender of, Defender of the Rainbow. It's a multi-chrome and I figured with multi-chromes, you know, you have to build it up two or three coats to get that BAM fl uh, multi-chrome flash on your nails. So imagine my surprise when I get that nail polish, Put it on my nails and it's a one freaking coat blew my mind my jaw literally dropped i believe the word that came out of my mouth was holy shit <laughs> so i couldn't believe it um that prototype has now been released or it will be released it was released at the indie shop and now is now going to be stocked on their website very very soon and is now under the name of embrace it so if you see uh, bees knees embrace it on their website it's a one coat multi-chrome absolutely gorgeous i'm gonna pop up a picture of it because i did did take a picture of it because it just blew my mind and i'm like i love this polish so that's um, a very early contender for one of my favorites of the year love that polish so much and like i said it i was in shock when that polish went on my nails Question number eight, what do you look for most when you purchase an indie? Perfect formula, amazing color, affordability. Right now I'm at the point in my collection where I go for uniqueness. Because I have such a large collection, I want something that's unique to my collection. And I know there's only so many pigments out there. There's only so many, you know, different colors out there. So I want a unique combination of those things that I don't already have because I have X amount of multi-chromes. They have X amount of hollows. I want something that combines those things and is unique. Price point doesn't really matter because most of the time I have to ship across the border. So I'm going to be paying in American dollars. So it's going to cost me 30% more as if, and if, as if it was in Canadian dollars plus shipping. So I, you know, I do take into consideration those things because I budget how much money I'm going to spend. But you know, if it's a an $18 polish that I really, really want, I'm still gonna spend that $18 because it's unique and new to my collection. So right now that's where I am in my collecting phase. I'm out I'm out of the buy all the polish phase and I'm into the, is this unique enough for my collection? That's the phase that I'm in now and I'm happy I'm in that phase. It's given me the chance to get out of the, just throw money at polish that I don't really need that I'm not gonna wear and I, I went through 120 balls of nail polish, pulled them all out to donate to a woman and children's shelter because I don't need these polishes. I bought them at the point of my collection where I was like, buy all the polish, buy all the polish. And I can tell you that 80% of those polishes that I donated to that women and children's shelter were unworn. They were never even opened. So that's where I am right now in my collection. It has to be something unique to my collection. I went up in a little bit of a tangent there, didn't I? Oh well. Question number nine, which is the last question, is what direction would you like to see indie polish go in? I'd like to have it a little bit more accessible. And what I mean there is right now there are there are stockists out there, but they don't stock enough brands, if you know what I mean. Right now, you know, I have to buy from individual makers. I would it would be easier for me to buy it just for one stockist. It would save me on shipping. It would save me, you know, different going to different websites. The accessibility is like that. I would just like them to be more accessible 
especially to Canadian shoppers, like the American Americans have really low shipping rates. I think it costs them three or four bucks to ship a, a ball of nail polish. If I want to ship one nail polish, I shipped a nail polish out to somebody and it cost me 17 bucks to send it because I wanted to send it tracked because I know things get lost in the mail. I don't want to, you know, send something to somebody and it get lost. So I always send my stuff tracked and the Americans can do that so cheaply and we can't do that here. So I would just like some sort of like more accessibility. I would like it for makers to, you know, send their stuff to stockists more. Right now Bees, Knees and Tonic are both available at the Girly Bits website, but they don't have any of their newer stuff. So if I want their newer collections, I have to order from Bees, Knees or Tonic. So it's, it's like, okay, so the accessibility is there for me if I want the older stuff, but I want the new stuff. I have the older stuff. So that would be something that I would really, really like is just, you know, you know, more stockists available and more brands using those stockists because that is my biggest thing is the accessibility to the anti polishes. Because like I said, shipping to Canada is ridiculous. Um, my last tonic order that I ordered, I think was 15 or $16 US to ship. Tonic has their code that if you spend over $50 US, you get $10 discount for Canadian shoppers, which is great, but I still have to spend over 50, 50 bucks to get that threshold. So, whereas the Americans are spending maybe four or five bucks on shipping. So it's, it's something that Canadians live and deal with, but it's frustrating. So something like Polish Pickup, where it's one low fee for shipping. That's amazing for us Canadians because $5 shipping for as many polishes as I want, that's great. If there are more things out there like that, that would be amazing for international people such as myself and people over in the UK and um, Europe and that kind of thing, Australia even, like to have that accessibility to get our hands on polishes in a more, in a cheaper fashion if am I making any sense? I hope so. That's how I would like the indie world to kind of change is just to be a little bit more accessible to the international customers. I'm hoping that I'm making sense. But anyway, that is it for me today. Thank you so much for watching. I do have a special video coming up on Tuesday this week. I don't normally have videos during the week, but I do have a video coming on Tuesday, so that will be coming very, very soon. And that is it for me today. I hope you're having a wonderful weekend and I will talk to you in my next video. Bye.